The Update 4 trailer included a heck of a lot of new stuff, except it didn't include everything. In fact, some of the best features weren't even talked about. So we'll be doing that here. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory in Update 4. Oh man, there has been an insane amount added to the game. From drones, to lights, new machines like the particle accelerator, new nuclear refinement type deals, plutonium, and the craziest thing of all is that the trailers didn't even show everything. There's more! And today we'll be going over 10 of those kind of hidden features. So if this helps you out, remember to leave a like. Also, thank you Prosperous Universe for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Because we're starting off strong here. This is probably the best feature. Actually, feature number nine. Depends on your opinion. Feature number nine is probably my favorite thing. This is obviously a second best. So in the patch notes, they told us that there is a new way to build. So if you hold E, a little scroll wheel appears. So we're holding the power pull in our inventory. We hold E and then all of the power related things pop up in a nice little scroll wheel like that. So we can just make a Mark II power pull instead, or a Mark III if we have the materials, which is pretty awesome. Pretty clear in the patch notes about that. However, it didn't go in depth with that. So say we wanted to build a belt, a Mark I, sure. Well, there's a wheel for that too. We can go to Mark II, three, five, whatever we wanna do. But wait, there's more. Conveyor lifts, they have their own wheel. Merger splitters, they have their own wheel. Literally everything has their own wheel. Storage even, pipes, you name it. It is incredible. So this feature, along with the hotbars, is like, whoosh. It just makes playing the game like a hundred times better. And before you ask, of course you can use foundations as well. And oh my goodness. <gasps> Pillar middles! Okay, I changed my mind. This is the number one feature added in update four. <laughs> they put the pillar middle in the game. My meme is canon. Let's go. But anyway, that's kind of like tip of the iceberg here. But the quality of life features don't end there. Water extractors always have been a pain in the butt to make and you need to make a million of them. And they're a pain in the butt because they're near impossible to line up perfectly. Even this is like half a centimeter off. <laughs> Luckily, they addressed this too. So now you can press right click and they snap together. So no more do you have to try and precisely line everything up. You just press right click or whatever your control is and they snap up perfectly. No more ridiculous half a, oh my gosh, half a centimeter gaps. None of that nonsense. Everything lines up and everything is organized and spicy. And you know, this is kind of a little thing, but man, these little things add up. Oh, but though, it kind of got dark here real quick. Luckily, we have lights though to light things up. And there are a lot of cool hidden things with them too. So with the floodlight tower, you can actually move the head of the floodlight just by using the scroll wheel. Which is more just of a heads up, not really a hidden feature. The main thing about lights that I wanted to talk about is the ability to daisy chain them. So you can go from one light to the next, to the next, to the next, without having to make a power pull for each of them individually. Which sounds kind of weird, right? Why is that even such a big deal? Well, aside from keeping light grids kind of together, it also implies that maybe in the future, they'll add daisy chaining power to other machines. So you can go from constructor, to constructor, to constructor, to constructor, without having to make like a power pull every so often. And that'd just be a really nice quality of life thing. For now though, we got our disco raves and we can do whatever we want with these. So, hey, <laughs> it's all good. Also, you can do this with batteries as well. So if the power storage things are all built in a line, you can daisy chain them at two. So at least a few things have the feature and hopefully this becomes a more universal thing. On the topic of power lines though, I'm sure most of you guys saw that zip lines have been added to the game. These bad boys that you ride on power lines wherever you wanna go. Uh, they are unlocked in the ma'am Katerium tree. So you scoot on down here, just off to the left, there's a zip line. That's how you get it. So these zip lines are pretty awesome. Nice early game transport before you have blade runners or anything faster. And one of the cooler things about them though, 
is that late game, they become one of the best traversal devices in the game. Because you don't need power to zip on power lines. You just zip. Easy. And like, of course you have ladders and all that jazz to get around. This is just another tool in the tool belt to get moving and grooving to wherever you want to go. Moving up, I will admit, is pretty dang finicky. It's probably best just to use like ladders or like platforms or normal things. But you know, you can still use it for getting up places. So it is nice. The main use of this is for getting down places. So it's really hard to jump on ladders or make a giant platform area. But if you need to get down from a high area, brother, just zip line. Super, super convenient. And off you go. Maybe off to the space elevator, because after you unlock tier seven and eight, there's another unlock that you can do as well. If you can complete that, it unlocks something in the awesome shop. Da, 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 The employee of the planet cup. Golden. Pristine, only to be bared by fix its planetary emperors. So take a moment and bask in the glory of being the best employee on the planet. Take your sip, and then put it away for literally ever, because there's still more features to show and things to boop in. Like an entire plutonium power setup. Because the process not only has completely changed, we all know that, but well, there's some funky things you can do with plutonium specifically. Before that though, just kind of a quick tip, you can actually see what blenders are making. So, in the top there, there's always a different liquid. So right now it's kind of like a weird yellowish, and that's for nitric acid. However, if we were to switch that over to like a cooling system, the liquid is then blue. And you can see this kind of from the top as well. Probably should get our handy dandy hover pack to check it out. But yeah, now it's blue. We switch this over to the fuse module to the frames. It's gray and weird. And over to the batteries. It's like super duper neon yellow green. Very handy for, ooh, if you have a nuclear setup. Oh, weird. Super weird, it's like glowing blue plutonium. Yeah, because if you have like a nuclear setup in one of these blenders, you don't wanna go near it. Obviously, and having extra little visual things like that really helps out. Anyway though, back to the plutonium setup that I've built over here. This is pretty much a very basic setup. Nothing's balanced or anything like that. We make the, what is the process? Make the encased uranium cells. With those encased things, you go and make the nuclear fuel rod, as we all know. And then like usual, those just go into the nuclear power plant, add some water, and you have a ton of power. Of course, after this, everything gets super spicy, because the uh, nuclear waste goes into plutonium. So the nuclear waste has to go into a particle accelerator, but it also needs non-fissile uranium. And you make that over in another blender. But then, after everything goes through the particle accelerator, you get those plutonium pellets then you have to encase them in an assembler with a little bit of concrete. Then everything goes into a manufacturer to become a plutonium fuel rod, which could be used for fuel, or it could not. But first, we gotta get things rocking and rolling here. Oh, cool, this makes a noise. That sounds awesome, man. Bruh, is it happening? Plutonium time? Yes? Yeah, brother, let's go. So we got our first plutonium pellets. But then it becomes encased. Throw that into the manufacturer. And finally, after all that, you have plutonium fuel, which effectively has turned nuclear waste into a power source. That is a pretty big game-changing thing. However, if you do put the plutonium fuel rod in a nuclear reactor, you make plutonium waste and you're kind of back where you started, in a way. However, you could also just put it into the resource sink and it's gone. You've deleted nuclear waste. Pretty expensive way to delete things, but you still can. However though, maybe we don't even have to make the fuel rod. Maybe we can just sink the pellets or the encased cells. Let's try that out. So the encased rods are first, do they sink? They do not sink. Oh. Okay, that's fine. 
it's not fine. <laughs> what about the pellets? Probably not though. I kind of expected the cells to. <sighs> okay, but still not the end of the world because we can get rid of uranium waste by getting rid of these guys. And they go in the sink. And they're worth a cool 260,000 points. So not bad. It's so now on your little lizard doggo buddies. Ooh, bring you nuclear waste. They're actually bringing you tickets. Brother, did you just take my berry and run? No, you didn't. You became my best friend. That's also another feature they didn't mention. Lizard doggos have a ton of new animations. So eating the berry there, whenever you open its inventory, you can pat it on the head. <gasps> that is the cutest thing in the world. Also, they have an absolutely adorable little sitting animation that they do every so often. Do it. You're just doing it for a second, please. I'm zoomed in now. The camera's on. Please. Please? Sit. Doggo, please sit. I'm dying over here trying to make you sit. I'm by the other nuclear power plant I made. Please. Just sit. Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. He's sitting down. He's sitting down. See? I wasn't crazy. He sits. He sits for only but a moment, but he'll be trained better in time. But enough of that, it is time for one of the greatest features that no one talked about yet. They added new alternate recipes to the game. New alternate recipes mainly for tier seven and eight. However, there are a few for the older tiers, including one that uses the blender, the chosen blender. The greatest machine in the world. Why is this the greatest machine in the world? Well, what's that? Do you see? What's that liquid? What's the purple mean? Something to do with oil. <gasps> what incredible oil memes could be done in here? Only the most incredible oil memes. So, behold, the alternate diluted fuel recipe. This literally flips everything upside down. So there is a diluted packaged fuel recipe, which makes you pack the fuel and then unpack it and like do like a billion extra steps. So you need two packagers and a refinery, which is revoltingly still in the game. But yeah, it only did 30 heavy oil residue and you had to package water. So, so many inconveniences there. Now we have the beautiful blender. It's so much better. More residue, more water. Who cares about the ratios? It's one machine. You'd have to put a packager on both sides of the refinery here. Dude, dude, dude. Best refineries forever. Yeah, that was easily my second favorite thing on this whole list here. And my second favorite feature added to the game in update four. Like, that wasn't revealed already. Like, oh gosh, it was such a pleasure to find this out. Anyway, a couple more things. I even have a bonus tip for you. Uh, number one, is that there is an hour of extra game music added to the game. So turn your game sounds and music on again, because you got some quality jams. But more so, a feature that wasn't mentioned, and I'm sure everybody will love, is, well, something I can just show you. It's auto-crafting. So, say you need a million super computers. You used to have to hold, like, the mouse button or spacebar or whatever. Now you can just tap that button, and it auto crafts for you. It's still slow as molasses, but brother, it's better than putting something weighted on like your mouse or keyboard. Anyway though, those are the extra features that I found while playing the game. If you know any more, let me know in the comments below. And again, remember to leave a like if this helped you out. Quick note though, but today's video is sponsored by Prosperous Universe, a space economic simulator similar to EVE Online, except it gets straight to the business. If you enjoy stocks, logistics, and corporate shenanigans like myself, I think you'll really vibe with this game. You'd run your own corporation by designing, managing, and trading goods, breaking into new markets, and constantly expanding across the universe. Now this is the kind of stuff I always enjoy about video games, like breaking the loan system in Roller Coaster Tycoon, or building our supply chains in Satisfactory. This game has those concepts in their purest form. And on top of everything, the game is free to play, so check out the link in the description and try it out for yourself. And again, thank you Prosperous Universe for sponsoring this video, and I hope you guys check it out and enjoy.
However, though, that is gonna be all here. So thank you for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye-bye.